Hello world, my name is Jaleese. This is the JJ Movie TV Social Shots Game Reviews. Right now I'm doing my top 10 worst superhero movies. Now, here's the thing. I, I like I said, I did not like The Dark Knight Rises. And I did not like certain films that a lot of people enjoyed, like Thor. But they're nowhere as near as called as terrible, god-awful films like these. These to me are the worst of bunch that they must be drawn away because they're really, really bad. Alright, so let's start off with number 10. X-Men Last Stand. Probably one of my favorite trailers for a superhero movie, and it was god-awful, this film. One, they kill off Cyclops. I can understand because the same guy that played Cyclops went to film Superman Returns at the same time. And the thing is, though, they kill off Cyclops in this one. Phoenix, or Jean Grey, arises. She ain't dead. She's actually the Phoenix. And I like the actress that played her. I thought she did a good Phoenix in the movie. But then they mix it up of mutants finding a cure. And let's just say it was not the best thing for this genre compared to what it was. And then Beast was also good in this movie. And there was good action scenes. I do not like the guy that played Juggernaut. Happy that Juggernaut was in the movie, but didn't like him. One, I didn't like this three-way love triangle between Rogue, Iceman, and Kitty, uh, the girl that could go through walls. Shadowcat, in other words. And Rogue basically loses her power in this. They had to focus some points on characters that are not needed, like Angel, who's played by a good actor. I think his name is Brandon Rolfe. And the thing is, I don't know why they focus on him in some cases. Like Magneto, like Ian McKellen, as always, they admit Steak accidentally takes the cure. She's no longer useful. Prowl's not longer there. The killing of Charles Xavier was botched at best, and it just really brought downhill for me this entire film. Good action scenes, but it's definitely one of the worst superhero films. It's on the top three. It, again, superhero movie list. Uh, the three, the triple curse, like all the superhero movies are number three, always die. So yeah, that's number ten on the list. And number nine is our then Spider-Man three, or as I like to call it, Emo Spider-Man. Oh my god, Emo Peter Parker, I don't know what was with this movie. My favorite superhero movie is Spider-Man 2, and it brought down Spider-Man 3. Such a disappointment compared to Spider-Man 2. One, it overloaded with too many villains, Green Goblin, Sandman, and Venom, which you only seen the last five minutes. Yeah, they don't have a good Eddie Brock. Even though I like Topher Grace from That 70s Show, no way he should have been Venom. No way, not at all, not gonna happen, no this film was such a disappointment for me, like I said, because, just because Spider-Man 2 was my favorite film, superhero film, and Spider-Man 3 was just this. Why, oh why? And Mary Jane, and eh, Tobey Maguire, and Kirsten Dunst, they had good chemistry in the Spider-Man 1, they had great chemistry in Spider-Man 2 because they were dating during that time, but Spider-Man 3... Maybe they broke up during this movie. Maybe that explains why their chemistry was so bad. Yeah, number nine, Spider-Man injury. Number eight is number ten, Blade Trinity. Now, Blade Trinity suffers some. It suffers from basically what well, any that it just has a little bit of flaws and could have been a great superhero film, but it messed up. Like Thor, in my opinion was messed up in The Dark Knight Rises, if you know my reviews. But Blade Trinity, let's just say, was so bad about this that Wesley Snipes needed backup. Blade, well, not one throughout the, the first two movies that he needed backup, not really. He only got a one from basically Whistler and the old man that was always there for him, and that's the only reason why. And basically he teams up with the Night Stalkers. Yes, crappy name, but Ryan Reynolds says, as they say, uh... Basically, oh, we were going to go with the Care Bears, but that name was taken. Ryan Reynolds was good in this movie, and a girl, I believe her name is Jessica Biel, she actually was good in this movie, too. They're not the problem with this movie. The main problem is Dracula, apparently. Dracula in this movie is apparently wants to kill Blade because he wants to fight an honorable vampire, apparently. And Dracula was a former samurai, except he's white as hell. He's a guy from Prison Break. It's absolutely stupid. Some of the dialogue's not that great. And Whistler gets killed again. What can I say? Blade Trinity was a failure. Another uh, another third movie again. The third movie in the series. Crappy. When is this curse ever going to end? 
All right, number f f six on the list is another den. Electra. The director's cut. I have the director's cut Electra on Blu-ray. Yeah, Jennifer Garner did a good job to me in uh, Daredevil. And this one, they butch up her character, basically. They re revive her, basically. You see a little part of when she was revived, or resurrected. Basically, she's a heck, stone cold killer. Doesn't care about people, families, and all that stuff. She will kill anybody that's on her target. And what this film just really dragged down to me, the special effects were good, but the story between her... Her and a character and his whole mystological uh, thing with Elektra just really brought this film downhill for me. So yeah, I really, really couldn't enjoy Elektra the film. So yeah, Elektra it is. And sorry, that was number seven on the list. Sorry. Number six on the list, Nerd and the Spirit. I actually thought I liked this movie the first time I saw it. And I rewatched it a second time and I realized I had a terrible choice. Oh my god, the Spirit was... Such a really bad film. Samuel Jack, I like the casting choices. Samuel Jackson as Octopus. Scarlett Johansson as a little sidekick. And I thought this film was, uh, it was, I thought it was good when I first saw it. But when I looked over, over you, overall, how much this guy could take as a beating is just ridiculous. And this really goes to the extent of superhero films. Then they dragged along with certain characters, which I didn't really like. They didn't keep up, they had a really, really off pace in this movie. I don't know why I thought this was a even a good film. To me, this could have been so much better. The fight scene at the end could have been so much better, but it just really drags out to like a whole bunch of machine guns, and that's it. Nothing special about what a superhero is. Nothing special about the spirit or what the spirit is to the city. And yeah, it was a disappointment. Number six. Number five is my least favorite X-Men movie of all time. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Do I? even need to say what's wrong with this film okay let's go with hey, let's go with how Sabretooth and Wolverine are both brothers let's go with the rape of Deadpool what they did to his character how every single scene that Hugh Jackman's in he comes back fight scene fight scene shirtless shirtless fight scene and oh my god it's really bad their action scenes are always good because it's this time our 20th century 21st century and the thing is, though, I like the casting choice to play who the guy who played Sabretooth. And I like most of these casting choices. I like Ryan Reynolds, again, from... He was in Blade Trinity, and he was a Green Lantern. Now he's Deadpool. I believe he played a great Wade Wilson, but he didn't do a good Deadpool just because they he didn't really have a part in playing Deadpool. Gambit wasn't needed. This entire film really blowed the, the origins of Wolverine. I can only say the credits were worthy of some... Time's going back and forth, but I got the Blu-ray edition on it. Why not? And yeah, not that great of a film at all. Very bad film. Number four is uh, something uh, my sister could agree with me on. Nicolas Cage and Ghost Rider. Oh my god. I got the extended cut edition on Blu-ray. Here's the thing. I don't know much of Ghost Rider's story. I never really got into the comics of Ghost Rider. I thought he always looked cool in that sense, but when I saw the story, okay, the story was good at the beginning. Then we went to Nicolas Cage, who doesn't really bring out the soul of Ghost Rider. And if that's the soul of Ghost Rider, I'm sorry, then Ghost Rider is a stupid character if that's how Ghost Rider is. The villain's not that great. Um, love story, uh, Ava Mendez is back with Nicolas Cage in a movie again. They were in Bad Lieutenant and a couple other films. And why, oh why, I don't know. The action scenes were good. The special effects were pretty good. But other than that, there was nothing really that got me into the story. It was just dragged on. And I got like a freaking two, two, and a half, two hours and ten minutes uh, film right here, I believe. Not worth it. Oh my god, it was so bad. I have not seen Spirit of Vengeance. Everyone says that was bad too. But let me know what y'all think of one for that one. Because I have really no idea what Ghost Rider is. And if that was it, I'm sorry. I'm not a Ghost Rider fan at all. Number three is Narnan, Catwoman. No, not Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman from Batman Returns. Not the Catwoman from Dark Knight Rises and Halfway, which she did a good Catwoman, by the way. Halle Berry's Catwoman. Okay, this film is wait, it's 104 minutes. And basically, this is the origin of Catwoman, how she became Catwoman, all this special effects and all. And special effects in this film are... Cheap. They're not really good. 
Catwoman villain is really just a cosmetic person. I Halle Berry's Catwoman, yes, yeah, she's sexy looking in that outfit, but give her some dialogue for God's sake. Give, give it a story. I don't technically blame her for being why this movie is a failure. Maybe just because of the certain casting choices and other stuff. It says 100, 100% pure fun and excitement. Yeah, I'm guessing that is fun and, and excitement for a 70 year old man that doesn't have Viagra no more. No, I'm sorry. Catwoman is such a god, god awful film. It's one of the worst superhero films I've ever seen. It's number three on my the list. Don't really care for this film at all. Totally forgettable. Must be gone. Now, number two is a film I don't actually have on with me right now. It's called Superman 4. Here's the thing. This is how bad Superman 4 is. When they start off the new uh, series of Superman Returns, they completely ignore Superman Dream 4. Superman Dream was terrible. Almost made it to the top 10 list. That was actually number 11 on the list. But Superman 4, what made this film was so terrible, was the villain. The special effects. And Chris Reed was the director in this. So I thought, oh, okay, cool. But no, it was really, really awful. It was really, really terrible. I don't know what they were thinking about this entire film. The villain, I'm not even sure what he was. But the fight scenes were stupid. The villain was stupid. I just wish there was something that made me like this film. But no, there is nothing to redeem Christopher Reed about this. This home is from Christopher Reed's career for me after this. Because I'm like, oh god. Such a bad film. Now, number one of the worst superhero film I've ever seen. This should be no surprise to you. You know how I talk about this film that I ranted out. Batman and Robin. Here's the name. Some people compare Batman Forever with Batman and Robin. And let me tell you this. That's complete bullshit. I'm sorry, but hang on a second. One second, people. Just one freaking second. Okay. This is Batman Forever. This is Batman and Robin. What makes this film good? I had the right mixture of balance of seriousness... I had a I had a great mixture of uh, the comic relief. It didn't go too serious, but it didn't bash the entire comic book of what it was. It still made uh, true to some people's hearts, including mine, and it did some characters justice. But it wasn't like trash the entire series or anything. But this film, Batman and Robin. Oh my God, George Clooney! I hate you for this entire film. You almost are no longer worthy of my vision of an actor when you're in this film. If you're around to play around with it, do something like Batman Forever. Batman and Robin, why oh why? Arnold Schwarzenegger. When people see Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie, they thought, oh, he's such a bad actor in this movie. No, he's an overall bad actor. How he just acts with these stupid one-liners, uh, fr uh, freeze the cool or something like that. It's the same thing of him and Predator uh, drawing a knife at a guy saying, stick around. If you didn't like him in this film, then... I'm sorry, but some of his other one-liners, that's what he's known for, for one-liners. I'll be Bach. Even though I like certain of his films, like Terminator and Predator, those are the only two films I like of his. Other than that, they ruined Robin's character. Batgirl's not really needed in this one. Alfred's dying. Poison Ivy was the best part of this movie. Bat nipples, Bat card, what can I say about this movie? There's been rants about this film on YouTube. You know about it, I know about it. So yeah, it's a very, very bad film. So yeah, number one on the list. So let's start off with the top ten, shall we, again? Number ten is our X-Men Last Stand. Number nine, Spider-Man 3. Number eight, Blade Trinity. Number seven, Elektra. Number six, The Spirit. Number five, X-Men Origins. Wolverine, number four. It's our then Ghost Rider. Number three is other than Catwoman. Number two, Superman 4. And number one is other than the god-awful film that must die... Must be drawn away forever. One of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Batman and Robin. Let me know what y'all think, everyone. This is a JJ Movie TV show, Shash Game Reviews. This is the top 10 worst superhero films of all time. Let me know what y'all think, everyone. Bye-bye.